Hey there, you might be wondering how an experienced data analyst actually uses AI tools like ChatGPT or Copilot to improve their work. So today, let me lift the curtain and showcase my workflow and how I am actually incorporating AI tools into them to improve my productivity and look like a boss. Whether you are just getting started or a seasoned data analyst, I'm sure you're gonna discover something cool, amazing and immediately applicable to your work in this video. Let's dive in. Before we get into the specific scenarios and use cases of AI in my day-to-day -day work, let me tell you a little bit about how I don't use AI. As I have been working with the various data tools like Excel, SQL, Python, and Power BI for more than 10, 15 years now, I already have a ton of knowledge and experiences and patterns in my mind. So for this reason, I don't normally use AI to simple things like writing formulas or building simple code or even writing DAX or Power Query or anything else. Because in most of those cases, I find that, for example, writing a formula would take me maybe a minute or half a minute, whereas if I have to go into ChatGPT or Copilot, that whole thing takes me like five to 10 minutes. So the, the friction is too high in those spaces. Maybe in future, these tools are so deeply integrated into our day-to-day -day productivity tools like Excel, Power BI, and Python that I don't really have to go into another space. But right now, that is how they are. And for that reason, I don't really incorporate them for that kind of work. Now that said, let me actually tell you how I use these AI tools to improve my productivity. So the first thing that I'm using AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot for is generating data. This might sound surprising, but because I work as a freelance data analyst most of the time, many times my clients will ask me to build a report or a dashboard and they won't really provide all of the data or all the combinations that are available in the data. So in these cases, what I normally do is I just go to ChatGPT or Copilot and I ask them to create me a mock-up data set. This is a really simple prompt. I've got some of these prompts in the video description if you want to kind of copy paste and use them. But it is as simple as saying, hey, I'm working in, for example, a healthcare data scenario, and I'm looking for a table with about a thousand rows. These are the columns that I'm thinking, can you generate the data for me? Now, usually once the data is generated, what I would like to do is either ask the AI tool itself to do a distribution of each column so that I can see how the values are spread, or I take the data, put it into either Excel or Power BI or Power Query or Python and do some initial kind of EDA or exploratory analysis myself to see if the data is suitable for my situation. What I found is about nine times out of 10, when you just ask the AI tools to make the data, they just make the data with a uniform distribution. What it simply means is, let's say there is an age column. AI tools usually generate all possible ages. So from one through 100, every age has same frequency in the data. Now I know from the experience of working in actual projects that that is unlikely. It all depends on what kind of data it is. For example, if it is a healthcare data, there might be more values in the extremes because that is the age groups where people are uh, usually susceptible to illnesses. So young people and older people, but if it is kind of like employee data, then you have got more values in the middle of the ages. So maybe from 20 to 60. So this kind of analysis, the EDA helps me see if the data is sufficient and realistic enough. And if not, I ask it to kind of do a little bit more uh, by giving some inputs on, hey, can you change the distribution of this or make sure that it doesn't look you know, too uh, uniform or whatever the scenario is. Another way I'm using AI tools and also having incredible results is the design and prototyping stage of the projects. Recently, I had to build a dashboard for a hotel chain using Power BI. Now, all the data is there. I knew how to analyze the data and all of that, but I was kind of stuck at the design stage. I was not really sure how I should prepare the dashboard, what colors to use and all of that. So I did what I normally do when I'm stuck in these kind of things nowadays. I went to the AI tools. In this case, I went to ChatGPT and I asked it to create a 
uh, fancy color scheme for a luxury hotel chain obviously this is not the final version that we use it simply because the hotel chain had existing color scheme and all of that but that process was really helpful because we were able to come up with some colors that contrast well and work very well in the report design scenario and once the color scheme is designed then i used that to create the initial prototype and mock-up design of the dashboard again using the ai tools and that fed into the final outputs that i have made in power bi so we could use ai tools like this uh, you can kind of uh, uh, either feed a logo to it or you can even ask it to hey can you make a logo for a luxury hotel chain or a high-end chocolate brand or anything else that you're working with see the initial designs and then kind of improvise around that because what i did find is and this is a personal story has got nothing to do with data analysis but i find that uh, sometimes the ai tools are kind of really way off for example recently i was thinking of trying a new hairstyle so all i did is i took a couple of pictures of me one like this one like this and i showed it to chat gpt and i asked hey i'm trying to get a new hairstyle can you tell me how i would look like with these new hairstyles so the hairstyle that i was considering was a mullet and i'm not really sure because it's a huge commitment right you have to get the haircut and then realize oh it doesn't look as good as i thought so i asked chat gpt and it showed me some pictures now the obvious problem here you can see it on the screen as well is that those pictures are nothing like me even though the initial prompt had my picture the mullet picture kind of looks like a completely different dude but anyhow it was helpful and you can also see where the limitation is as of now with the technology uh, it will give you something that is workable but we are still required to put in our hat as a designer or as a developer and improvise and maybe even completely ditch it and come up with a new thing but that has been a very helpful experience using AI tools to uh, kind of overcome the initial uh, hurdle of designing colors or figuring out the right mix of things for a report. No discussion of AI tools is complete without talking about the coding aspect of it. I am also using AI tools to improve as well as simplify my coding workflows. For example, recently I had to combine a bunch of Excel files but using Python. I know how to do this with Power Query in Excel and other tools but Python I have not done so much coding per se recently. Naturally I went to ChatGPT, I put these Excel files in the prompt. Do you know that most AI tools now allow you to actually upload files? So I upload these files and then I asked it, hey, can you tell me what kind of Python code would I write if I have to combine these Excel files? So it wrote the initial code. I found that most of the time these AI tools, while they're very good with coding because they have got all the examples and everything in there, uh, they also produce code that is a little bit too verbose. Uh, but because I have been working in this space, I've been a coder all my life, pretty much all my adult life, I knew when I looked at the code that, oh, there is too many instructions here that do not need to be there. So I gave a further prompt and it cleaned up the code for me and voila. I had the clean cut of code, I immediately copy pasted it into my VS code and I was able to combine the files and kind of build that program, add some extra instructions as needed. Using AI tools to generate the code, especially when uh, you haven't done that kind of work for a while or you find that the uh, writing part of that code is a little bit too straightforward and boring and you know there's no thrill in figuring it out yourself. That said, as a person, I like to figure things out. So this is something that I personally enjoy. You know, whenever there is a challenge, rather than take the shortcut, I would like to see how how to solve it because that gives me a little bit of satisfaction. So if you're like me, I think using AI as a co-pilot or like a wingman in your quest to conquer the problem is much better than letting it fully vibe code for you because uh, I find that there's not much joy to be had like that. On the other hand, if you are somebody who who's not too hands-on, who don't want to get in and dabble with the code too much yourself, you could let the AI tools write most of the code. No matter what, I want to throw a caution here that most of the time the code that produce, that is produced by AI tools still requires human intervention and careful oversight on it 
to ensure that there are no critical errors or obvious misses in the logic. So that's something that I have uh, found many, many times. The code that is produced, it does look all right only for that scenario but once i throw some real world things at it it might fail so that kind of testing and those things are very important and this is a costly mistake that you don't want to make as an experienced data analyst so use them to produce the skeleton but obviously put in your input your hat as an experienced person and make sure that it actually works in real world from time to time, I inherit work from someone else. So recently for a project, someone else already built this entire Power BI report and the client wanted my help. So they gave me the file and the data model had like lots of things going on. It was actually kind of like a time sensitive project. They wanted the results yesterday. So all I did is I took the data model, I took a screenshot of it and I put it into the chat GPT and I asked, here is the data model. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Amazingly, because the screenshot had all the tables, all the fields, everything is listed, chat GPT was able to do a beautiful job of explaining the tables their connections and what is going where all of that to me in a neat format now that i had that instruction i was able to then go ahead and start deciphering the measures and why it is working where it is failing and fix the problem for the client immediately so this is another capability normally back when i was getting started as a business analyst i remember spending weeks to the end looking at a huge data model diagram trying to understand everything so that we could fix some problems in the ETL. Whereas now, AI tool has become my first step of the discussion. I would just feed the model to it and then kind of get it to comment on it and explain and maybe even ask it to identify any problems or issues or performance things that are going on in the model because of the way connections are set up or some tables are redundant or whatever. So very, very helpful. Again, definitely try it out with your data sets. Another way I'm using AI tools is for documenting and writing up. This is something that gets left for the last stages of the project and all of us hate documentation. So once I finish the project, these days what I've been doing is, because I'm also a YouTuber, I record a video of how to use the Power BI or Excel solution that I have built. And then I feed the video to the AI tools and ask it to first up generate a transcript and once the transcript is there then make a clean cut documentation of how to use the thing it would make a nice article or a word document for me i would then pass on the video and the document to the client so they have they have it and they can start using it straight away really simple in many cases i'm also using it to polish my emails for example if a client wants me to pitch for a project i would use chat gpt or copilot to write that email and kind of neatly structure it and create the value proposition and all of that of course i come in and make sure that it is not too verbose or uh, you know too silly or anything like that but most of the time this is how i'm speeding up the process so as you can see through all these examples the core part of analysis that is how i analyze the data what i want to look for and how i present or how i calculate things that part is not something that i'm not relying on ai yet simply because i have got that experience i've got the skills and i feel that at least as of now i am so much faster than the ai tools to do that work but there are all of these other things that i have to do as part of a, my data analysis work and i find that ai tools have really simplified the process for me and improved my productivity of course this is only one part of my work there is a whole another part of my work where i am also making youtube videos like this and I'm using AI a lot in that space as well. Maybe in some other video, I'll talk about how I use AI tools as a YouTuber. But in this video, I thought I'll share, kind of reveal behind curtain scenes of what actually happens for a senior or an experienced data analyst when it comes to using AI tools. I hope you found all of this helpful. If so, give it a like and maybe share it with some of your friends. And if you are working as a data analyst, I want to know how you are using AI tools. Let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for new ways to improve my productivity, do better and maybe save the time so that I could go and uh, you know, play a little bit more Elden Ring. 
talk to you later bye